Welcome. Let's take a look at a related rates problem that deals with filling a triangular trough. We have a triangular trough that is 16 feet long and 4 feet across the top. The ends of the trough form an isosceles triangle with altitudes of 2 feet. We want to find the rate of change in the height of water in this triangular trough if a hose is adding water to the trough at a rate of 2 cubic feet per minute when the height of the water is 1 foot. So let's go ahead and get started by drawing a representation of the situation here. So we have a triangular trough and we know that the ends are isosceles triangles. So I'm going to draw a representation of that trough. Now this representation is going to help me strategize how to engage with this problem. And what do we know about this trough? We know that it's 16 feet long. And so uh, it's important for us to remember that the length of this trough is not changing over time that the trough is always 16 feet long. We also know that the ends of the trough form isosceles triangles with altitudes of 2 feet. So the altitude of this triangle on the front and the back is 2 feet. We also know that the trough is four feet across the top. So the base of this triangle is four feet. Now we're being asked to find the rate of change in the height of the water. If a hose is adding water, so we're adding water at a rate of 2 cubic feet per minute when the height is 1 foot. So let's kind of um, rewrite that in um, a more direct form. We want to find the rate of change of height. So we want to find dh dt rate of change in height would be represented by dh dt and we're adding water at a rate of 2 cubic feet per minute. What unit of measure is me measured in cubic units? Well that would be volume. So this is a change in volume over time with respect to time. So we want to find dh dt when dv dt equals 2 cubic feet per minute and, our, and the height is 1 foot. So we want h equal to 1 foot and h equal to 1 foot. Now, um, as we think through this process, what we know is that this trough is being slowly filled with water. And it's being filled at the rate indicated, the 2 cubic feet per minute. So this water is rising. And so what we know is that because the water is rising, that volume in the trough is a function of time. So volume, volume changes with time. So volume is a function of time. And as the water rises and we track the height of the water, we'll call that h, then the height of the water in the trough as we add water, it also changes with time. So as we strive to find a relationship that will allow us to 
connect or relate these two rates of time, dh, dt, and dv, dt, we want to remember that um, both volume and height change with respect to time. So we want to keep those as variable representations in the pro prior to the process of finding the derivative. Well, so this is um, a triangular prism. And the volume of this shape is the area of the triangular base, uh, sides, so the area of the triangles, times the length of the trough. Now, we know the length of the trough is constant. The length of the trough is 16 feet, and that does not change with time. So this is going to be times 16 now we need to find this area of the triangle. So let's zoom in on that triangle just a little bit. Our triangle is four feet across the top. The two sides, it's isosceles, so these two sides are congruent. And we know that the height of the triangle is two feet. So this is two feet, and we want to find the area. Now, if I wanted the area in terms of the entire trough, that would be rather straightforward. But keep in mind, the volume is going to be the area of this triangular cross section. So we need to know what the area is when the trough is filled to some height h. That's the area we need to know. To find the volume, we need to know what this area is so that we can multiply it times the 16 feet of length. So to find that, we can um, use the idea of similar triangles. Um, similar triangles um, have corresponding parts that are congruent. So when you compare sides of the triangles, um, they uh, have a common ratio. So this smaller triangle that I've got highlighted is the area we're interested in. Notice we don't know the base. We don't know how far across or the length of that surface of water. We know it's less than four feet, but we don't know what it is. So let's go ahead and come up with a description that relates uh, the height and base of this unknown triangle to the triangular face of the trough. Well, we could compare the altitudes of the two triangles. That is, we could compare the ratio of h to 2, so the altitude of the smaller triangle to the larger, and that should have the same ratio as the base of the smaller triangle to the base of the larger triangle, so base to 4. And now, if I'm interested in the area of this, the area of that triangle is one-half base times height. And if I'm interested in the rate of change of height, that is, I want to find dh dt, which quantity in this area is more important to me? Well, of course, that's the height. So when I um, come over here and look at this ratio, do I want to replace height, that is, do I want to think of height, if I multiply by 2, so is it useful for me to think of height as 2 times base over 4, which means then area is 1 half base times 2 times base times 4. Is that helpful if I need to find dh dt? Well, there's no h in that expression. 
So there's, it's not useful for me in terms of finding dh dt. So let's back up. And instead of solving for h, let's consider solving for b. Well, if I'm solving for b in this proportion, I'm going to multiply by 4 on both sides of the equation. And I end up with 4h over 2 equals b, which then means that my area would be 1 half. My base is now 4h over 2. I'm not simplifying that, but it's fine. And then times h. And at this point, we see that the two twos in the denominator, when we multiply them, we get 4. And so then our area is simply h squared. If I'm looking for a rate of change in terms of h, that's far more useful than uh, having the formula in terms of, of b. So at this point, we know that the area of the, the water against the end of the trough is h squared. So our volume is h squared times 16. And the units for this are, of course, feet squared. Now at this point, we have a, a formula, an equation, that can help us find and compare the rates of volume per unit of time and the rate of height per unit of time. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. We get dv dt equals, uh, we'll have 2h dh dt times 16. And as we're keeping track of units to make sure we're processing this correctly, recall that h has units of feet, dh dt has units of feet per unit of time, in this case minutes, and 16 has units of feet. So our rate of change here is cubic feet per minute, which makes sense. That's what a rate of change of volume should be in this context. So continuing on, um, 16 times 2 is 32. So we have dv dt equals 32h dh dt. Now, um, we are interested in finding, recall that we, are, we were asked to find dh dt, and now we have an equation that relates dh dt with dv dt. And so now we can find dh dt. Let's go ahead and divide by 32h on both sides of the equation. So we have 1 over 32h dv dt equals dh dt. Now, we were given that h is equal to 1 foot and dv dt is 2 cubic feet per minute. So we have 1 over 32 times 1 times 2 for the cubic feet per minute and that equals dh dt. So that tells us dh dt is equal to 1 16th foot per minute. Now let's go ahead and interpret, and interpret that within the context of the problem. So what this means is the height of the water in the trough is increasing at a rate of 1 16th foot per minute when water is being added at a rate of 2 cubic feet per minute and the water level is one foot. Water level is one foot is equivalent to saying the height is one foot. And I just noticed is increasing was missing here. So that's what this work means. I hope you find this helpful.